The view control bar in Revit is this bar down here. Can you see these icons here? Crop region, crop view, and so on. Now, I'm in a 2D view at the moment. You can see I'm in the 01 entry level view there in the project browser, and it's a flat 2D view. And the reason I've done that is I want to show you the scale option here in the view control bar. So if I click on 1 to 100 there, I can select a different scale. Let's say 1 to 50. And you'll notice there, everything changes. Can you see when I zoom in now, the bubbles are actually smaller on the grids, like so. It does an automatic zoom extent. So if I change that back to 1 to 100, you'll see it updates again. But if I zoom in, can you see the bubbles are obviously bigger to allow for the scale? So that's your scaling in your view control bar. What I'm going to do now is double click on the wheel to do a zoom extents and then go down here in the project browser and go to the 3D view, the default 3D view like so. The next one here is detail level and it's normally at medium. I'm just going to do a quick orbit and go round to the front entrance of the building here and then I'm going to do another little orbit, just bring that up a little bit more just so I can see some details. So I'm going to pan and then I'm going to orbit there, bring that round a bit just so I can see that detail there. So I'll zoom in a bit closer and bring that into the drawing area like that. So you can see we've got some circular hollow sections and some eye columns there, some eye shaped columns. Now, if I change the detail level here and go to fine, you might get prompted for this as well, save the project. I'm gonna put do not save and set reminder intervals. So I can change that in my settings like so. I'm not going to save this one because it's just the default project that comes with Revit. But what I'm going to do is just look at the detail. Now I've got fine, medium, or coarse. If I select coarse, can you see what happens? I actually lose the columns. But if I go to medium, the columns are there. If I go to fine, the columns are there. They don't actually look that much different between medium and fine. It's primarily a graphics setting. But when I zoom in real close, like so, you can see that's the medium setting. Fine is there medium is there. Not a lot of difference in the 3D view you'll notice. So I'll zoom back out again. I tend to leave it set to medium. It's up to you. Again, for those seasoned Revit users, I'm probably preaching to the converted already. But if you're not used to these features in Revit and you've never used them before, quite useful. The next one is even more useful. This is the visual style. Now I normally leave it set, as you can see there, shaded with edges. But You've got lots of different display options. If I go to graphic display options, that takes me into the options dialog, the graphic display options I hasten to add, where I can change settings for things like shadows, lighting, background, and so on. You can also save this as a view template, and then every time you create a new view, these settings will be applied. I don't need to do that. I'm using the default settings at the moment. That's fine. However, let's go through some of these. Wireframe, as you can see, fairly different. If I go to hidden line, that's wireframe, but with all the hidden edges removed. If I go to shaded, that tends to be what I use most of the time as well. If I go to consistent colors, a little bit more detail there. You can see that obviously concrete and things are a gray and steel is a paler gray. If I start working through to realistic though, like so, it has to think about it and it updates it. Now you can really see the concrete and the steelwork. There's a real difference there. Now, if I go to the last one, which is ray trace, this takes up a lot of graphic display power. So you'll notice there, it takes a while to refresh. And then when I do zoom in, each time it pixelates like so, and then it refreshes and it gives you almost a real time material. Can you see that? Now this takes up a lot of graphics processing power, which is why we normally stick with something like shaded, because it's much, much quicker to zoom in and out using that particular visual style. Now we also have the sun path on or off. So if I switch the sun path on and continue just with the current settings and zoom out, you can see there, there's my sun path there, and I can work with those settings and create things like shadows and so on. Normally the sun path is off, like so, and I'll just double click there and do a zoom extent. But the idea being that obviously if you want to show shadows on your model and you want to see where they are, you can go in and set those sun settings. Here we have shadows off at the moment. If I switch the shadows on, 
There aren't any because I've got no sun path on. If I switch that on and continue with the current settings, like so, I don't actually have any sun settings switched on. But if I go there like that and go to sun settings, you can see there's sunlight from top right. I'll OK that now. You can see the shadows on the model. If I go to shadows there now, they're off. If I go to sun path settings, they're also now off. So you can utilize those tools very effectively in the 3D view. I can also show the rendering dialog box there. I can leave that switched on. Great if I'm using a dual monitor setup where I can do renders on another screen. I don't tend to leave it switched on. I tend to leave it switched off. We also have things like crop views and crop regions. I'm going to go into a 2D view for that. So we're back in the 01 entry level view. So at the moment, the crop view is off, like so. And the crop region is now on. I need to show it though as well. There it is there. So if I click on that now, I can drag that crop region and I can change the view like that. And notice the bubbles on the grid lines update accordingly. So I can switch these things on and off. So there's the crop view. Do not crop the view. If I click it, I can crop the view and I can also switch that crop boundary on and off. Here I have temporary hide or isolate. So I can temporarily hide something if I want to. I don't actually have anything selected. So if I select a grid line like that and then click there, I can temporarily isolate that element if I want to, like that. And it's isolated. If I go back here, I can reset the temporary hide isolate back to where I was before. Here, I can reveal any elements that are hidden in the drawing if I hide anything. So if I just click that off again and I right click, let's say, on that grid line, you'll notice there I can hide in view, hide by category, and all the grid lines disappear. If I go here like that, right click on a grid line again, and unhide in view, category, and then switch the hidden elements off, the grid lines are back. Here I can temporarily view properties if I want to, and also here I can show the analytical model. Much better when you look at that in 3D, it's not a lot of use in a flat 2D plan, for example. So that's your view control bar in Revit structure.